Well, is the stream choppy for you guys? A little? Oh, like a beer. Is the stream choppy for you guys? Well, thankfully it's static most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's gonna matter. Hello guys, Baba Booey too. Hey chat. Sorry, uh, there was no stream today. I was packing. I had to pack all day. In addition, <laughs> packing heat. I was. I had to. I had to. I have to go tomorrow morning or afternoon. Whenever. I have to go soon. Um, alpha more like beta. <laughs> Got him. Um, but welcome uh, to this our episode twenty six of Dungeons and Dragons: Pirate Trouble. Yeah, I am Alphonse McKenzie, or Jonah to some people. I don't, I don't know why you'd call me that, but it's weird um but uh we are on episode 26 of a pirate trouble we are uh we, I, ruben the dm will give you guys a brief quickly uh about where exactly we are what exactly we're doing and uh how we're going to keep moving forward um we had a lot ha that happened last time and there was a there's a lot to unpack which we tried to do but uh i think we're going to get a lot of that done today yeah um, we ventured into our trauma <laughs> yeah we got stared at by the whale man the whale knows us deeply the whale knows all he knows us probably more than we know our uh, ourselves hey buddy but, um, if you're speaking german we don't uh, well he does i but... speak german and you're just speaking nonsense <laughs> You're just Ikasa Disa Volka. I have the week? What? I hate this week. There you go. Good stuff. You're welcome. Who are you? Do I know you? Do wait I know you? Wait a minute. Do, wait a minute. Who are you? Just about to head to bed, so I'll miss out on this one. Oh, Sag, it's okay. It's okay. Thanks for coming and saying hi, though, Koozie. Appreciate it. Um, it's generally a pretty chill vibe here. If you've never been here before, um, I'm going to tweet that we're live here in just a second and uh, get the ball rolling. I'm, I'm always excited for D&D. I, I have been waiting for this all week. It's such a nice way to uh, get over the middle of the week and have a, a good outlook coming out the other end. Yeah. It's a good cornerstone each week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every Wednesday. Same bad time, same bad channel. See you, Caught. Thanks for coming and saying hi. Also, guys, the YouTube has been reworked a little bit, so all the VODs are up, and they are on a playlist on Alpha Anarchy. Uh, if you don't want to get spammed by a bunch of video uploads of all the streams all at once, uh, then you will have the unlisted playlist on the main channel for you. You can technically have my stream going indefinitely in your room yeah. at this point. You can have it going for, like, days at a time. Yeah, the VODs are all up. Did the D and D session end? No, just we're just starting, boy. Yo, Koozie, thank you for over the ten gift subs. What? Thank you so much for the ten gift subs to Mads the Dad, Toru the Cool Cat, uh, Leon Lion, Little Fox Talks, The Lerm, Oddly Ollie, Red Witch Roses, Willow TV, Honey Bear Arsonist, and Tin Pat. Consider that an incentive to come to D and D. You might get a gift sub. Who knows? Shrug. Just be here and chat. We all we all the players. All the, the DM, everybody, we all participate in chat. We all talk. We all make jokes and shit like that. So, um, we yeah, it's, 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 we see your sins. I see everything you're saying. Um, we're doing okay. Today was a bit of a, an emotional roller coaster, I'll say. Um, and I'm excited for the weekend. Let me just say that. But, um, do you think it's time we dip over and, yeah, let's go. I'll give him, I'll give him a little bit of a heads up here. I'm not. You're heads coming I'm here. <laughs> They're in. Hello. Yo, are Hello. we live? And Heads up, up, I'm here. This <laughs> happens. This is the... Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's episode of <laughs> our pirate-themed One Piece-inspired D&D campaign. My name is Ruben, your DM for the evening. In just a few minutes, we'll hop into episode 26 of the campaign. If you weren't here last episode or if it's your first time joining us, a recap is available in the chat. Just type exclamation point recap to catch up. As always, let me offer our special thanks to the folks who've made tonight's game possible for the art, Julian Rush and Vieira, the map illustrator is Tezi Peku, and for the stream, Mukrush, Nathaniel, and Jonah. That's me! Uh, 
<laughs> uh, tonight's warm up question for the players uh, Has your character ever had a really bad date? And if so, what what went what went wrong? For no particular reason, let's start with McCleary, hey. played by Chad. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, I, yeah, he's de he's definitely had bad dates. Um, I think he's like, he, okay, he's kind of like a a little bit of a salt of the earth kind of guy. I think he's probably had maybe a high class date that he brought to like a dingy joint, you know ordering like big gross beers or something and just you know like weird food that you eat with your hands and it's just all around like kind of like not her thing and and just bad he doesn't get that kiss lovely again. lovely uh next up again for no particular reason let's have marini played by riley really? <laughs> uh, yeah i feel like marini has had like a lot of bad dates like in my mind, because Ruben, we haven't talked a lot about, like, Satarian culture, but in my mind, they have, like, a part where they're, like, young adults still, and they start, like, like courting people, almost. And so Marini did, like, a lot of courting, but every single guy just, like, was not vibing with her. Like, they're all, like, like weak in her eyes. Like, she's like, this can't handle me. And she'll, walk, she'll get up and, like, walk out in the middle of a date. Their feathers weren't bright enough, were they? They weren't. They they weren't doing the impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's a Riley dances. character. The dance good they enough. didn't pull a knife on her. They didn't pull a knife on her. <laughs> um, next up, let's do Harlow, played by Jonah. I feel like Harlow probably had to go on dates as sort of like in a 007 capacity. Huh. Yeah, the name's mm -hmm. Harlow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where he has to go and like uh, seduce somebody, or he has to be seduced by somebody, and then you know steal their secrets. And which is why when he uh, was almost slept with the fish lady, uh, he was, was like, fish, "Listen, was a fish man, fish that man, fish man. Was man. <laughs> the fish man." Um, he was like, "Look, I know your steeds, right? I know, I know how this works, right? This is just, just level with me and give me the information that I need, and I'll leave you alone." And so, yeah, I feel like he's had uh, a really bad date in that capacity where it kind of went it went haywire and there was a shootout and like <laughs> <laughs> somebody died and yeah it's it's a yeah, really bad date is is different when it, when you're a international super spy <laughs> super spy <laughs> uh, next up let's have uh sunny played by Corey. hello good morning um <laughs> I feel like Sonny's probably never been on a proper date. I feel like maybe he's he's been on something that he assumed was a date and it very much actually wasn't. Um You know like when oh you invite somebody, oh you want to go see a movie and they go, "Yeah, absolutely." And they think it's his friends and Sonny probably thought it was like, "Yes, score, I'm in." Uh that's probably the gist of it. I'm running on two hours of sleep. <laughs> all good, all good. There's no um, wrong answers. Next. Sure about that? <laughs> Monty next up, let's do... Let's do Freya, played by Courtney. Hi. So, um, <clears throat> I feel like nobody would have asked Freya out on a date. I don't think that she's the type of person, or, you know, the type of person to really have that many friends, at least not in her home life. I feel like she was kind of secluded. Um, so I feel like as far as dates go, they were more like matchmaking type deals. And she would have gone on like chaperoned like dates, like with maybe um, I can see that a supervisor on either end. So like, but she would have acted out in some way. So like she would have had to, get out of it and like just be as non dainty and demure as possible to where like she was completely like I would say like one of the guys so instead of she would be coming back with her hair as a mess like her dress is like all muddy and uh she gets yelled at by somebody but uh she would have been like, no, dude, I'm not a lady. 
I can be, but I choose not to be, and you're definitely not worth it, so. Ooh, I love it. Uh, very cool. Uh, next up, let's do Razim, played by James. Ahoy! Um, Razim um, is, is probably, has never been on a date, period. But I imagine if he did and it was a bad date, it probably because... Because little Z is there and he would fuck it up somehow. Like unintentionally or actually, you know, it's... it's is he it's, it's, taking little Z on dates? No, it's like one of... Okay, see, you remember... Um, what's in this uh, Scooby-Doo show? Um, the one where Velma and Shaggy are more of a, a, a plot point romantically? And then Scooby-Doo is always fucking it up by uh, just being around. Oh, he's just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of like what that situation would be. Little I would Z imagine, is a though, I, I, I would imagine, though, that that Mazir might have had dates before, though. Um, I don't think he can recall that right now. Mazare, but yes. Mazare, I'm sorry. Maz yeah. Mazare, sorry. He's not, he, knows, he, knows my, he knows my real name better than I do. Actually, that's, kind of, that's actually kind of. It is kind of canon. It's kind of canon. Yeah. Um, Hips hat Mazir. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm, that's, that's canon now. Razim constantly mispronounces his old name because he doesn't remember what it's pronounced. He only just remembered it like he only just today. It, so, yeah. does he go on dates with Little Z? He doesn't go on days with Little like, Z, but Little Z it. kind of like inserts himself into situations it's randomly, so as you've been aware. Aware. Self it's a very thin line between cockblock and wingman. <laughs> yeah, he is the reverse <laughs> Moe gap. Yeah, you oh never God. know what you're gonna do. <laughs> <There's no gap. laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Oh I'm gap. Um, lovely. Um, next up, let's do Myrtle, played by Nathaniel. Well, when you're traveling the seas and you you meet a lot of women, men, everything in between and all around, and everyone loves seamen, so uh, being a <laughs> pirate, you, like, <laughs> like, um, you were you were just setting it up the whole time, weren't you? I knew it. Um, muting, muting him right now. I, I, I'd say people have trouble keeping up with with him. He's trying to get. Uh, I don't know how else to answer this, so I'm just gonna say what that. God. They can't handle Amazing. him. Amazing. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag handle turtle him. power, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, last but certainly not least, uh, Kai played by Ryan. You know, I actually went over, the moment you said the worst date, I was like, I already went over this last week. Uh, so back when he was still living in his uh, village, he had like this massive crush on like the son of the village's leader he like saved stole, <coughs> stole, i mean saved up money to like buy him something really nice asked him out on the date and the village leader's son was basically yeah i'll go on a date and he was just like ah, i'm just doing this to sleep with you so they slept together and then afterwards the village leader's son ghosted him for like a month and a half mm. so he got really hyped about this day was really excited and then the guy basically was just like i'm not gonna t i got what i wanted i'm not gonna talk to you for a while Bless you, Perfect. by the way. You sneeze, right? Yes, you could, you sneeze in the middle of that. Um, oh, cool. Also, <laughs> um, someone in the chat mentioned, you know, you're absolutely right. He does kind of look like Lance's D and D Sona from Voltron Legendary Defender. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Who? Yeah. I see it. I see it. Wait, who? Cool. Yeah. I'll I'll post a picture in yeah. the um, Discord chat. Okay. Uh, right. Let me I, move the just... map over to the yeah. to the whales. Whale time. Okay. Whale time, guys. Oh, uh, whale time. oh right. Oh, I think. I didn't know you were Welsh. God. <laughs> you're from what? Wales. <laughs> the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> cancel him. Uh, <laughs> um, holy I have to shit. Go. Yeah. I can't believe we went, believe we went that long. Hunter, you come at me and my British boyfriend. Oh, oh my god, he actually left. Oh, he made a yeah, whale. He Truman right. made a whale pun last session. That's right, but it was unintentional. I don't mm. even remember what it was, but it was good. Mm. Well, these sky is whales. That, is that the main us. difference? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um. All right. Well, when last we, <laughs> when last we left our heroes, um, the limelight pirates had ridden up the sky current. It's when I when I describe what's what happens in our campaign, it sounds like I'm high, but yeah, it's like actually man, but what is it, happening. It makes sense, yeah. 
<laughs> when the limelight pirates flew up into the sky uh, via the sky current, they... <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny to me today for some reason. Um, they Ruben, found a... No, I'm not. I'm actually... This is normal. This is base level Ruben. So, base yeah. Ruben. Uh, I like this. <laughs> base level Ruben. Base Ruben. Um, anyway, uh, they found a very quickly a sky whale... Uh, and were uh, kind of pressured to get on uh, the the creature. Uh, they met other Cetarians, uh, but the main gist of the past episode was each member of the Limelights was assessed by the All-Mother, which is to say the whale itself. Um, she looked into their past, looked at their misdeeds, successes, um, triumphs, failures, and ultimately after digging deep into each person's history, uh, concluded that they were each worthy to go to the home island, the central point of Cetarian culture. Cetarians are the sky um, a winged uh, race in this setting. Um, you had just had your first finished evening aboard uh, the Sky Whale. Uh, you will arrive at the home island within the next day or so. Um, and we previously concluded with a little scene between uh, McCleary and Marini. We still have some time this evening. It is late at night. Um, you're able to see the beautiful stars um, above. There is no uh, obstruction given that you are flying literally above the clouds. Um, the space here is calm. It is a little bit chilly, admittedly. Um, most of the, of the Cetarians have, by this point, um, headed to bed. Um, there's a few kind of still talking around fires. Um, are there any other conversations that are happening um, this evening? Hmm. Uh, let's see. Not from me. I just kind of sit and ruminate on what I heard. So we're all around, right? We're just all around together, right? No. I went and talked to some. I went and talked to some Cetarians at the end of the last session, and I just kind of uh, tried to vibe with them. Um, you also learned. You also learned I learned some Cetarian. Yeah. Cetarian. Go and go jump off a whale. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll talk to Mirini for a little bit while we're all together. Sure. Popular tonight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Always, um, right? So Mirini, I've. Bit of a silly question, I suppose, but I've grown up. I always told my grandkids about stories about vegetarians and sky whales and stuff like that. But out of curiosity, are there any fun stories that you guys used to tell for your own people? Of I don't know any any fantastic stories and rumors. Marini sort of ponders a bit. Can we interrupt you for a second? And now, Riley will try to make up the story on the fly. Um, to, to interrupt you just a quick second, I think the music might be a, t- a touch loud and we can't hear Nate on the screen. You can't hear me? That's what stream we is. We can't hear you, but it's it's too, it's bah, 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 bah. too loud. Oh, nothing is working now. Oh. Can you guys hear me at all? Yeah. We can, yes. yes. You can, but can stream. Can you hear Nate? My computer has been um, dying. Okay, tree thrower said that's better now. Is it okay? Because nothing is yeah. working on my PC. If we can still hear you on the stream. Okay. Yeah, someone said it's just quiet a bit. Mm. Nate, Nate is low. I can turn me, turn me up. Is that better? Ba 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 ba. Cool. I think so. Yeah. Cool. All right. Bob. All right. All right. Mary sort of thinks it's like, oh, you're asking me questions about early childhood. Hmm. I remember one that a village elder once told us about a Cetarian who tried to touch the sun, which Mm. is impossible, but tried to touch the sun, and as they got too close, their wings turned black and they fell down to the sea below. And that's how sirens became somehow. Oh, that's interesting. 
Um, uh, and the last one I remember was, uh, uh, can't remember anything to mention. <laughs> kicking in. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, next, oh, we need next. to take it back. <laughs> There's a quote. There's a cat. Last one I remember, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. This is a great start to do this every night. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, 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 taking it over. He's like, oh no, do, do you need to go back to the ship? I can. Uh, I'll take him back to the ship. Oh no. no. Don't all okay. of you start speaking at once. Any... <laughs> We're not here, are we? <laughs> Everyone um, is. Any... Fuck you. Any... <laughs> Any... He's off his bed. All right, Grandpa, let's go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are there any other... I, when I say this, by the way, it's, I'm not make. You don't have to have a conversation. To. You're free not to. It's, it's, I, I just know that y'all like talking to each other. <laughs> characters, so... I want to force each other sure conversation. Yeah, um, I do have one. Sure. I would like to find Takai. Where are you, my man? <laughs> uh, Takai is sitting by the fire, and he's just kind of staring into it while also kind of personally keeping track of where um, everyone is going when they're heading to bed tonight. Okay. I uh, I come and I, I sit down by you and I say, Well, laddie, how you doing? Uh, you know, you know, fine. I'm good. I'm good. I'm 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 perfectly fine. Uh, hey, how are you? Well, I'm okay. Uh, all things considered, bit of a whole strange affair, wasn't it? Looking at the eye of that whale. You see his tail immediately floof when you mention that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Real weird. Real, real weird. What's wrong I don't know it's it, it's kind of personal oh I I understand you know you can talk to me of course though if there's anything that you have going on well what what did the big giant mother fish say to you Oh, a bit of this and a bit of that, really. Uh, some things from me past uh, life on sea and, you know, that type of stuff. You mean back when you were in the line the first time? Uh, it, it did show me a bit of that. You don't talk much about that. Well, there ain't too much to tell, really. Uh, I was here, and then I wasn't, and now I'm back. I mean, the way you talk about it, like, <clears throat> ending up outside, like, whatever's at the end of the line, it must be pretty fucking amazing for you to come back in here. Well... So the stories go, right? Only what Silver Jolly and his crew truly know. But it's enough to uh, make me excited, that's for sure. I mean, it's a giant treasure. It could be... What if it's like a wish? That you could make anything you want to happen. And not only that, you'll be a living legend. You'll be remembered for all time. And as the Empire says... That's the most important thing in the world, isn't it? The deeds you make, your renown in your life. Because after that, it's gone, you got nothing left but the stories folk tell you. I suppose if you believe their religious views, I, I mean, I was born in the Empire, so I can't help but believe it. What about the... You know, the family they leave behind. You leave behind. What do you mean? Well, I mean, yeah, 
being a legend is great and all, but what about the people who are going to remember you? Like, the people who are actually going to remember you. Like, I mean, you'll remember me. I'll remember you. But, I don't know. I feel like the way someone's going to remember McClear, he the great pirate, just from the legends, is going to be real different about how, about how, I don't know, me or anyone else will remember you. Uh, you're, you're right there. I mean, there's not much you can really do about that, I suppose. I think it's probably best to be remembered at all than to be forgotten, though. You're talking about family, you mean, like the folk that know you best? Yeah. Hey, hey. Don't really have too many of those left, to tell you the truth, Takai. Uh, my mom and dad are... Well, I hope they're still alive. I, I don't know. I haven't seen them in a long time. And my brother, he... passed away, as you know. I mean... I really only have you and the crew. I don't know, you... You kind of feel like family to me sometimes. You know... I feel the same way about you. You, uh... <laughs> well, you remind me of my brother Tommy... Quite a bit, actually. I think maybe that's why I took a liking to you. And he sort of gives you like a, a nudge with his elbow. <laughs> if you could have done anything to save his life, even if it was a really shitty thing for you to do, would you have done it? In a heartbeat. You see, the thing you'll come to learn, Takai, is that Good and bad is really only a matter of perspective. And in this life, it's too short to be worrying about what other folks think. If it's bad for them and it's good for you, well... It sounds harsh, but I suppose it sucks to be them. You gotta look out for yourself and the people you care about, and... At the end of the day, everyone else is trying to do the same, aren't they? So... At least. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what being a pirate is about, right? Looking out for yourself? I suppose it is. I think maybe it was more about... Uh... Disrespecting authority, or not even... Not letting anyone tell you how to live. Yeah. Fuck the Imperium! Right. Fuck them all. Sometimes, sometimes literally. <clears throat> I didn't say anything. Well, you know, whatever floats your boat there, Letty. You've been thinking about your family then, I take it? Yeah, and he kind of plays with the uh, charm on his choker. Just, I think I was, what, somewhere in between 19 and 20 when I left them? I just... I know that Virtus is keeping my brother safe. I mean, as long as I keep up my deal with him, but... At the same time, I sometimes wonder how he's doing. We used to tell stories to each other about the adventures and pirates who went out on the sea. There's really no one left to tell him about that anymore. <laughs> Have you tried sending him a letter or something? I guess I don't know how they'd get it back to you, but, well... Sonny can do that thing with magic. Can't you do anything like that? No, but... Actually, is there any way of getting, like, mail outside of the line? That you've ever heard of? Well... Not particularly. Uh, there's gotta be a way. The Empire sends messages. Well then, uh... I guess I'll just have to ask Sonny about that, like, magic letter spell he uses to talk to people. Hey, Why, well, he just talked to Lockie in, uh, last night. 
I'm sure he can send a message to your parents or your brother and just to see how things are going. You know, thanks, McCleary. After everything between Freya and losing Monty and everything, I've kind of been feeling a little weird about this, but I think I'm feeling better now. Glad to hear it, laddie. I'll always be in your corner, you know that. <laughs> and I'll be, and I'll always be in yours, old man. <laughs> Glad to have you. And he kind of puts an arm around your shoulder. <laughs> he, he, he full on like cat nuzzles you. Well, I suppose I should hit the hay. Who knows what the Cetarians have in store for us tomorrow. Well, I mean we've survived this far. Hey, it's a good thing we have Marity around to, uh, play kick them. I think she said she was going to try and wing woman for me with a couple of handsome Cetarians. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you know, never mind. I was going to say there's more to life than that, Katekai, but, you know, that's a really large part of life that... Never mind, I'm not going to go there. I hope she sets you up. Have a good night. Uh, you too, lad. And he gets up and walks away. Lovely. Um. Okay. Any other um conversations as you uh, drift off to sleep? The first time you have slept, not on the ship, um, but on the back of a living creature. Okay. Um, the night passes. Um, uneventful. You do, however, see... Uh, along with this beautiful stars in the sky, um, the two moons, um, the more reddish uh, bronze one, um, two beneath the cloud cover to make it out here. But the uh, larger um, cream yellow colored moon uh, is beautiful crescent uh, in the sky above. Um, morning comes. If any of you have um, expended any abilities, you get the benefits of a long rest. There is a uh, Ruben. meeting. Ruben. Yes? Uh, before we wake up, there is uh, something I mentioned to you a few weeks back. Go ahead. All right. Um, about two hours before everyone wakes up, uh, since Takai has a cat, only needs to uh, rest for about six hours. Um, Takai uh, sneaks over to wherever Freya is sleeping, um, casting greater invisibility first so that he's not noticed. He kneels down behind her and very gently wakes her, uh, very gently shakes her shoulder to wake her up. <laughs> Oh, 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 what was it? Was cool. And crouching behind her, he drops the concentration on greater invisibility and casts suggestion as he says, I heard a rumor that next time you saw McCleary, you tried to steal the lock post from him. And if you're confronted about it, you'll say you were stealing it for your hoard. Uh, Freya, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's rolling so slow! Oh no! Is, the fucking suspense. <laughs> Real quick question, Ruben. I can only use those luck points for myself, right? 
That is correct. Um, <clears throat> all right, for for the next eight hours, as long as I'm holding concentration on this, um, let me let me just pull up the uh, suggestion spell description. Yeah, where are you sleeping? I'm like sleeping kind hours. of. Okay. I'm sleeping kind of off to like by myself because. I've been drinking that depresso. <laughs> oh, okay, not on the ship. Right. You um, you I mean, where? Yeah. Yeah. You suggest a course of activity and magically influence a creature you can see within range. They can hear and understand you. Creatures that can't be charmed are immune to this effect. The suggestion must be worded in a manner to make the course of action reasonable. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> next time you see McCleary, you're going to need to try and steal the log post from him. As if it's in the next... <laughs> Eight hours, you're going to need to try and steal the log post from him. And if he catches you and asks you what you're doing, you're going to have to tell him you were trying to steal it for your horde. Oh. It's excellent. This is excellent. You have good stealth, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, just to get away as quickly as possible, he is going to stab himself, use his misty escape to turn invisible and get away. And because I only have to sleep six hours... I'm going to go and get the benefit of a long rest and get all of my spell slots and that ability back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Um, or not cool, depending I'm on your I'm going to tell you yeah. whale. <laughs> Dude, okay. right in front, of, in front of the whale. <laughs> really? Seriously, in front of my auntie? The whale he told, and said he was fine. He told the whale he was going to do something shitty to Freya. And the whale was like, oh, squints. The whale was like, all right. <laughs> the whale was like, I like, I like drop. And right after that uh, conversation, too. <laughs> Not okay. cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next morning, um, there is a gathering of cetarians um, near the back of the All Mother. Uh, and Marity, you know, I think you you have the obvious edge on everyone here because you are from this culture. You fully understand and appreciate what's happening here. Um, but for the benefit of, you know, re-explaining this to you and to the group, mm -hmm. kind of what's what's happening. So the you can tell by the grouping of folks near the back and their age. Most of them are 12, 13, 14 years old or thereabout. This is preparation for... Uh, something called the Bishdeen, which is the Cetarian coming of age ceremony. Um, the Bishdeen occurs for all Cetarians at about this age. It's a mix of a ritual and like a test of one's ability to live and survive independently. It's kind of the the sky whale version of kicking the chick out of the nest. Um, <laughs> the sky whales, you know, um, I was about to say the word orbit, which isn't which isn't the, the, the correct term, but they they, they they fly around the Grand Line uh, roughly about a, once a year, um, and they make a stop at the home island. This is a well-known, established thing among Cetarians. Um, for about that whole year, they're kind of dropped off at the home island, and they are forced to... Uh, live under a, a set of uh, very special rules to test their their ability to live independently they cannot speak to any other cetarian um they can share meals but they have to remain quiet they have to either spend their day hunting the local game in meditation you know fasting adventuring th through the island um it's kind of like a an extreme version of a uh vision quest um along with some survivor. cetarian well, I, I wouldn't say survivor. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, but it, 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 yeah. it yes, it it has that element to it. Um, now, for the first week or so of the Bishdeen, the candidate's older sibling or cousin stays with them to help make the uh, transition easier. So they have some support. They're not just, you know, dumped off. They, they do have yeah. an, an elder to, to support them for that week. Um, if any of them fail the test... Um, they are required to leave the area of the island where this whole process occurs and um, wait for the All-Mother for their particular Skybell to return. 
Um, about one third of Cetarians don't pass their first time. Most of those then will pass the second time. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a tough uh, you know it's a tough world, and this is a very very ancient um, ritual and practice. Um, and I think you would also know that the the location is really important. It's not just that the the home island is the only kind of um, physical location outside of the sky whales for, for the Cetarians. It is itself a incredibly magical arcane location. It it has what I would call uh, a significant amount of old magic. Um, something very um, foundational to the earth. And so it is both a sacred site for Cetarians. Um, it has this, this whole practice that occurs there. Um, but it, it's also kind of a symbol of home, uh, away from home. Um, so you, you see these teens preparing. You know that you're headed towards the home island in the next day. You've been one of those people. And you've also been one of the older siblings or cousins who's helped a younger cousin in this process. Um, and I mention this all not, not just to, to wax poetically about Cetarians, but because <laughs> the elder of the uh, of this clan on the Sky Whale, the one who kind of guided you through the initial... Um, Candor sessions with the whale um, explains that um, you are all required to respect the tradition of the Bishde, which is the name of the individuals who are um, candidates for kind of elevation through this practice. And their Kia, K -A, K I A, which is the name of the partner or the older sibling who supports um, the younger sibling, even outsiders. Um, she says that your first occasion on the home island requires you to be placed in twos in the same fashion as the Bishde and their Kia um, for the duration of your first week. Um, and she says, um, I don't know how long you intend to stay on the home island, but I would recommend not to stay any longer than one month, as the magic there can be very dangerous for outsiders. Um, additionally, um, you not only have to be paired in twos to respect the tradition, but we've had some m misfortune in the past with large groups of outsiders. So while the eight of you, uh, and of course Marini, will be allowed to stay on the home island at your pleasure, as the All-Mother has decided, we would prefer for that first week for you each to, in the spirit of the Bishteen, um, be on your own with your selected pair. Um, the elder, um, takes from another attendant, um, various, uh, very special, um, sacred ribbons made of this very beautiful, um, blue-white string and begins tying it carefully around the wrists of two members of each of the limelights. It was about two feet in length in give between uh, the rope here. So basically each person will have on one hand this uh, bracelet of, of uh, a ribbon of string, and it's linked to your partner. Um, so here are the partners. So we're hanging uh, together. Oh, you're, you're assigning the partner. <laughs> I'm assigning I'm, the partners. I'm so excited. Ah, yeah, I didn't know you're. I'm, so I'm, 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 I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Oh, am I getting scared. randomly paired with? You no, know, you're getting paired up with. So does Fred steal my clues? <laughs> Good lord. Is that no. <laughs> um, the first pairing is uh, Myrtle and Razim. Hey. 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 Okay. Second pairing is Freya and Takai. Oh, ah! cool. <laughs> <laughs> the third pairing is Marini and McCleary. Oh, oh my god. Oh, yes. god. I can see where this is going. <laughs> and the fourth pairing is Harlow and Sunny. God yes. damn it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, with the people we ate. Yeah, Y'all hey, no, no, kept asking for it. So. I love it. We didn't know it'd be four ways. It's like we're, the, the the fun bus is Myrtle and Razim, though. Honestly, like, yeah. <laughs> the fun like they're they just gonna moosh. fucking go blaze it in the woods. For they got a little Z and Moosh, like <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have such a good time. We're hey. all gonna. Meredith McCleary gonna have a great time. They're gonna have a great sure. time. We have oh, a rope. Yeah. 
between us? We have a rope. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have a great time. What does that oh even my... mean? Oh yeah. What the fuck do you think it means, John? <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Freya, don't you have something to do before we get into all this? No. Do you? I don't know. Do you? Does does? Are we already tied? Go. <laughs> she has to do it, right? It was suggested. Just at least attempt it, right? Yep. Oh gosh. Oh shit. So we've are. Oh god. Okay. Um. That's right. There would have been some time before this whole thing. It's not like she's waking you up and like... Yeah, like, <laughs> like time, 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 time together now. Okay, uh... McCleary sees you on deck and he like waves at you. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't notice. He she's not gonna wave on. back. She's not gonna wave back. She's focused. Or actually, no, she is gonna wave back. It's just very kind of half-hearted. It's not her more cheerful self. He um, would be suspicious, but he's not because everyone was read by the whale, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. God. She's going to be observant to see, like, when no one's, like, she's she's kind of doing what Takai did as far as, like, paying attention to where everybody is and, like, making sure that she's kind of out of the line of sight, really. She's already been kind of depressed in the last, like, 12 or so hours, mainly because of what she saw, and it's just kind of hitting her hard. So she's been kind of just like keeping to herself anyway. Um, so, God, I hate this. <laughs> I am going to. Uh, oh gosh, I'm going to use. I'm my, sorry, my, it's you. It's you or my sick brother. <laughs> I know. Um, I. Gosh, I'm trying to find where it is. Because I don't want to sneak attack, I just want to... Okay, it's just stealth. Um, so I'm gonna... I need to sneak towards him, and at least just kind of make my way towards... Make my way. Uh, McCleary. Make my way. Without being too obvious. So I guess I would okay. need to make a stealth check? Or a performance check, because I don't know, it, like, just well, to act natural, or to... <laughs> so, this, describe to me what you what you would like to try to do. So, I feel like Freya has mastered the art of masking really because like she has to keep appearances when she's in front of her father at least so mm -hmm. but at the same time she's not very good at it because her performance is low but her persuasion is high well, don't don't talk oh, about sorry. mechanics just tell me sorry, what sorry, you sorry. actually do so i feel like she would just kind of meander over there just kind of wandering aimlessly just kind of appearing as though she is alone with her thoughts and just trying to focus on her task would also try to look like she's not doing anything wrong. Make a deception check. Okay. <clears throat> God, okay, what is it with my thing today? It's rolling very slow. <laughs> sometimes all good. Sometimes this arch is Sometimes D D Beyond is just a nightmare. A bitch. Did I get a natural fucking twenty? Yeah, I did. Oh my that's, god! That's oh, you're really fucking out. funny. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> when the dice want something to happen, it, that's great. Tearing um, me apart. Yeah, no, Fred. You've you've you know you've you've been the person at the party or the event who's been able to kind of you know sneak your way around without being seen. You are. It's weird because you're super colorful, uh, yeah. and so you you naturally attract a great deal of attention to those who don't know you. But everyone on the ship. And on the whale already, they, they they know your deal, and so yeah. you're you're now just the you're just the girl with the blue hair. Um, yeah, no, you. I don't think McCleary would sense a thing. Okay. So at this point, I would say she's about maybe five feet from him. I'd okay. Say. Um, just kind of looking at things. I mean, I presumably, like, know she's there. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't well, try to sneak up, right? You're just... No, I just... I guess you would just think that I'm just doing my own freaking thing. That I'm just mm -hmm. right, minding my right. own business. And just meandered over there, not on purpose, just because that's just where my feet are taking me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I am going to try to position myself in a way that, like... I need to see if I can see it first. Uh... Is it on his belt at all, or is it in like an no, okay, pack so or anything? I'm gonna say that if we're on the ship, I think he just leans over like the rail. He's just kind of looking out at the sky. Like you okay. said, he probably was aware that you were there, but you just you wander. So it's not. Uh, yeah, Freya's doing her thing. 
but he actually has a um he has a few hidden pockets in the inside of his uh waistcoat so it, it's definitely it in there. easier good gracious okay uh Okay, so I... I would like to trick him. Or at least try. How so? I'm gonna say there's a really bad stain on his waistcoat, and say, this needs to be cleaned immediately. Okay. <laughs> Make another deception check. Okay. Don't resist. I mean, it's McCleary. That waistcoat is probably filthy. Probably, With the blood probably. of my enemies, it's, I mean... It's probably not the most comfortable. I mean, it kind of stinks. Well, it's part of me attire, you know? Yeah, I got a five. Should I make a uh, insight? Um... What is your... What is your passive perception? Fourteen. God. Yeah. Yeah, something's up with her. Yeah... You saying me clothes are dirty? I mean, I just thought maybe I could do like a, like a load of laundry since we're kind of at a stopping point, and maybe I can get some soap. Uh, it's a kind thought, Freya, but I, I don't really like other people handling me clothes, you know. I understand. I don't really like people touching my things either. Hey. Um. I, um. I don't know what else to try now. <laughs> Putting your hand in his waistcoat? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I oh. feel like... Uh, but, um... I think maybe for the, the sake of everyone else's noses, I think I think we should just do some laundry. McCleary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're saying I stink. I'm saying everyone stinks. All right. Well, tend to yourself, lass. I'll, I'll take care of me own, don't worry. I can I wash really, it for sure. I really think I should clean your clothes, McLeary. <laughs> I weren't born yesterday, lass. That one ain't gonna work on me. What do you mean? What do you want? I don't want anything. I want to wash your clothes. <laughs> Make it... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> with, with, with disadvantage. Oh my god! <laughs> I <laughs> trade me. I need to teach Freya things. Oh. That was so good. One more time. Disadvantage. God, how can it get any fucking worse? It you can, can roll a one. Oh, yeah. No, please. I'm not even gonna fail. <laughs> I kind of want. I'm so. I love you, Courtney, so much. But this is great. Good. Fuck. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I got an eight. Yeah. No, you got a seven. No, I got a seven. That's right. <laughs> you want me to roll or just go off passive? I. I. I think. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I need to say anything. Oh, uh, McCleary. He crosses his arms now, and he says, <laughs> "You know, Les, you're kind of." Giving me some strange vibes there. Isn't that kind of my thing? <laughs> yeah, but more so than <laughs> usual. It was endearing mean. strangeness. This is, uh, plotting strangeness. I'm not plotting. Wow. Uh, insight check. Go for it. Famous last words. I'm not plotting. My insight is actually really shit, though, so... <laughs> <laughs> Something in the chat. Freya, your vibes here are the stinky thing here. <laughs> uh, 13. Uh, yeah, she she is not she's not being fully honest with you. Right. You can already kind of see like tears are welling up in her eyes. She's she's frustrated and she's afraid. What's going on, Les? Um So if I've... Do I have to tell him what's happening? Is she aware that she was charmed, too? Probably not. I don't know. How's that spell part of the spell if it Let off? me go to... Suggestion 5e. Give me a second here. Oh, Ryan has it in chat, too, I think. Oh, does he? Yeah. I don't know if it's as specific as what's in the manual, but... 
target must make a wisdom save. It doesn't throw on a say, save. but normally you're oh. not aware of a charm oh. until after the charm has worn yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. but second part of the suggestion, if confronted, tell them you are stealing it for your word. Okay, uh... I, um... I, I just... I just wanted the log... You wanted the log pose? Yes, sir. Freya. <laughs> Why? For my cord. His face... Any sort of kindness is... Just <sighs> evaporates. <laughs> you wanted to take the log pose, our lifeblood, on the line. So that you could put it in your dragon horde. Yeah. Freya. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you. I'm sorry. That's the most ridiculous thing. As it... <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. And get this through your head. Ain't nobody, nobody, ever touching the log post but old McLear. You got that? Yes, sir. I will not abandon this for anyone. Okay. And if you think you're putting it in your hoard, and I find it there. Well, you know what they do to thieves in the Empire? I know. I know. Don't do that. I promise I won't do it again. And you see that, uh... He, had, you know, he, he got intense, but then he, he kind of... He, there's like a flash of regretting that. Mm-hmm. And then he, he, uh, he says, oh, Right. Good. Because I... Because I'd hate to have to... Yeah, right. And she's, um... She's, uh... Going to just, um... Uh, oh, we gotta take a breath. Um, She, uh... She's gonna just... Turn on her heels and run. To... Freya. There's Ooh. one golden rue amongst the crew. Every pirate knows this. You might steal from lads you meet on land. You might steal from merchant ships. But you never, ever steal from the crew. I won't do that again. I promise. I promise. I promise I won't do it again. Good. And I think now, Freya, that the, the suggestion effect has been completed... You now know who imposed this on you. Oh, fuck. Once she realizes it and that memory comes back to her, oh, boy. this feeling of just betrayal and despair just flood through her and her face goes white. And... All those tears just they finish falling and then there's no more. And she just kind of in a daze heads back to her room, shuts the door, and does not come out until like everyone is ready to get off the ship again. Until Ooh. someone like calls for her. Ooh. Can I um he looks sad. Uh, you want some shots to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you go. Um, I would like to, I think after that incident, I would like to find Harlow. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm just chilling with some Cetarians, trying to learn a broken sentence. He sort of waves at you and says, can we have a talk for a moment? Sure. Uh, can these guys chill with us? Uh, <laughs> better make it private. Okay. Um, Mawabo Chu Cobb, bruh. This is this is the scene in the uh, in the show where the bad translation goes on the screen of like what he's, you know, <laughs> your mother is a Your mother is a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I take you aside from where they are, and I say, uh, "You won't believe what just happened." Okay. Freya was trying to steal the log pose for her Wh hoard. What? I could hardly believe it. She was telling me that she wanted me to wash me clothes so she could 
nab it for herself. Uh, why? She's never done anything like that before. I don't know. Maybe this... Maybe it's all getting to her. Did you, you know? talk to her? I, I... Well, I might have yelled at her. Ah. She was trying to steal me log post, Harlow. No, I don't blame you. We need to have discipline on this ship, you know? Right. She caught just... me off guard. That's a flogging, that is, stealing from another pirate. Five lashes, at least. Or you lose a hand, but that might be extreme. We'll think about it, but it doesn't seem like her. Hey. Well, she was going on about a horde now and again. She doesn't really talk about that much. No. And besides, that wouldn't work with her horde. No, and it doesn't really make any sense when you think about it. Why take something as valuable as the log pose as if we're not going to know? As if she has another purpose for it. Aye. Maybe she were lying and didn't want it for her horde, wanted it for... Well, her father's an admiral. What if she's trying to bamboozle us? Hmm. Keep an eye on the log pose and on Freya. Hey. I think... I think we can deal with this another time when there's less... He kind of glances in at the house with the Cetarians. The variables. Right, I agree. I don't think... We're in any immediate danger here. But that's something to be careful of for sure. I have a question for you, McLeary. Hey. Do you trust Marining? Trust is a hard thing to earn. Yeah. I think I trust her intentions as helping us. For I don't now? trust very many people so readily. Yes, but I, I'm sure she'll follow us to the island we're going to, but I, we got to get off before then. Do you think she'll stay? With the crew, you mean? Yes. Do you want her to? She's a valuable asset. She's a Cetarian, which means safe passage through their territory, assumedly. Hey, she's a skilled fighter, too. Yeah. I think that, well, like everyone, she's looking for something. I think if we asked her, she'd stay for a while at least. I'm sure she would. I'm you think trying, to, oh, go ahead. trying to find out if these Cetarians have something to gain from any of this. You know, I wonder. I mean, they did, by uh, all accounts, let us partake in a sacred ritual. I think if they were insidious, they wouldn't have let that happen. Probably would have just filled us full of arrows and thrown us over the side. What did you see, John? Oh, uh, I saw my life before sailing on the line. Inside check. <laughs> Go for it, and uh, McClear, you can roll persuasion or deception, your choice. Um... I'll go for persuasion because he's not necessarily lying. He's just not sure. telling the whole truth. Right. Twelve! Oh. No, by one! Oh. Uh. oh. The second one is true. Okay, okay. Yeah. Shit, okay. Hmm. Okay, well, keep an eye on Freya and we'll address the theft with everyone. I think that's a good idea. They'll find out eventually. Aye, you're right. Now keep me eye on her. You best do the same, huh? Mm. 
And if I, I miss anything else, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Hey. Thanks for your time, Harlow. Sure. I'm gonna... They have a new math system that's kind of strange, but very efficient. Oh. Trying well, to learn it. Sounds boring, but maybe you'll it, take to it. It's mentally stimulating, but yeah, I'll go back to it. Thanks, John. Hi. Can't see. Cool. <laughs> Fucking nerd. <laughs> Doing math. They changed the math. Mind. Math is math. <laughs> yeah. 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 The yeah. only difference is that yeah. Satarians yeah. have zero. The rest of the world still doesn't have zero. What's zero? I'm sure there's zero. How can you not have something? <laughs> what is zero? How... They have a number of what? They have negative numbers. Yeah, I only have things. I only have no, things. Not, not things. I don't, yeah. I don't have the absence of things. The... Cetarians use that weird new way of math that they teach in school. <laughs> yeah. don't make any sense. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So this all takes place before you have the uh, the pairings, because once you're paired up, I'm sure there's a. Uh... Well, <laughs> actually, the camera I think flashes back, and we see all the stuff that just happened, and then we're back to the present, and you know, close up on Freya's expression as she looks up at who she's being uh, tied to here. Oh, she's pale. Um, oh, God. You know, oh, like, in fact, to the point where, like, even her hair looks like it's paled a little bit. Like, her horns are a lighter shade. Her wings have have become, like, almost white. Like, she is full body pale. It. She is not okay. <laughs> you know that face that cats make when you hold something in front of them and they smell it and then just go, Nyeh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guy is making that face right oh now. Oh my honestly. god. <laughs> Marini sneaks a flask to Freya. It's like, hey, I, I think you might need this. <laughs> Thanks. She immediately takes a shot and just. <laughs> um, Myrtle and Razim, what's what's sort of your reaction to being paired up? I'm curious. Um. Uh, as far as the ritual goes, it, it should just be Tikai and I, right? We don't need the the, um, the, the puppet, right? That, that would disrupt the ritual. Um, we well, want to make my... sure that we keep it sacred, right? Um. Oh, is that really what they said? Uh, I mean, I can just, I can just put them away, but. Um, so, wait, wait a minute. Well, I mean, we only have so much rope. <laughs> rope. I mean, I can put him away and then, you know, bring him back uh, out later, he, right? He's, he's not going to do anything spooky or anything, right? Why are you scared of a puppet? He's filled Bro. with a soul that's not completely yours. Come can on! Can I have a ribbon, too? Oh, no. You can't drink, oh. little Z. You know right, you can. If he's coming, I'm taking some of this with me. And he pulls it. Oh, he, what? He, he, <laughs> is there any, like, uh, fun mycology related uh, shrooms <laughs> or fun things to take <laughs> along the <laughs> journey? Oh, yeah. I'm sure. I give you some Sectarian drugs. Or something. I'm sure, there are some sure Sectarian shrooms. I'm sure there are. I'm sure growing on, on the whale itself, there's some. some I almost said it. Uh, some some mad fun kush. magic Dang mushrooms kush. Or, or something like oh, that. I think it, yeah, it's it's probably something close to LSD right. in terms of the experience. Right. Yeah, oh, no. Oh, you're Fantastic. bringing food. Uh, I mean, uh, I guess I should bring some food too. Uh, it's uh, very good for bonding. For bonding. Okay. Actually, uh, I'm can little Z use? Uh, Little Z, what? try this. <laughs> Little Z can't eat? <laughs> oh, God. I mean, you don't know that, do you? Well, I'm just confused. You sound like you don't want him to come, and now you want to well, eat a snack. I, so. I retract my statement if Little Z can, can, can try this. Oh, it's a mushroom. And he eats it immediately without 
<laughs> any question whatsoever. Guys, I didn't know little Z could eat. I'm gonna keep an eye on little Z for the next 30-ish minutes. Do you have minutes fetus? And for the next if, two hours. And, <laughs> and, and see yeah. if, if there's any changes. Well, okay, I'll, I'll let you know what color he is. Uh, sure. This might be more fun than I thought. Okay, so what exactly are we supposed to do while we're at we're, we're, during this whole process? Wing it. Um, that's where <laughs> that that's where the elder comes in. Um, we will um have each of you at a different part of the island to help enforce the restriction on you all being together for the first week. Um, we are almost there. So we're just hanging out for a week, huh? Um, okay, well. Well, um, Freya me, is, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Freya is kind of like that line is taut, man. She is, <laughs> she's as far away from him as she possibly can be. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> hey, can, we, uh, can we trade? Unfortunately, um, this is the decision of the All Mother. Ruben. <laughs> uh -huh. Should I talk to the all of them? <laughs> I want to speak to your manager. <laughs> oh, very right now. We already spoke to the manager. But the all father said I could do it. Okay. Cool. What, what exactly are we meant to be doing then? I guess hanging out, exploring. Know, well, bonding. you were the ones who've wanted to come to the home island. Um, you're welcome well, we to. to right. You're welcome to. Look around in the residential area, or um, go through the um, uh, the temple area. Um, I would just stay away from the formal Bishtin, um ritual sites. Um, that is meant only for Satarians to uh, stay in. You will know um, the border of it. Um, even outsiders will be able to recognize it. Uh, I see. Okay. Thanks. Okay. We have to like sleep next to each other and stuff too. Wait, Fred, did you get cooties? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Didn't you realize what you meant when you said that? He starts laughing. <laughs> uh, I get. You'll get. I lean down to Sunny and I whisper. <laughs> I fart in my sleep. <laughs> 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 this is why you're alone, old man. Oh my god! Well, this, this is this is gonna be a great week. <laughs> so many quotables today. That's great. You just hear distantly across the island. What? <laughs> um. Okay. Well, let me uh, transition as we uh, arrive at the home island. Well, I, I, ch I check the chat and I see James's giant ass face <laughs> randomly. <laughs> Hey, we're all doing our reaction. I love the giant face. I see. I, I love your face. I love your face. Uh, okay. Sorry, it's half four in the morning. I'm not posting shit. <laughs> all good. All good. Okay. Um, members of the Satarian clan begin flying in excitement around the All Mother's head, moving along with her into a particularly dense area of clouds as you approach the home island. Uh, you begin to soar upward and you hear a loud wail song from your All-Mother as thick fog flows over all eight of you. It's only a few moments before it clears and you see the most incredible sight you ever laid your eyes on. A break in the clouds as if an enormous bubble of unobstructed air. Um, only clouds on the outside allowing you to focus on what's right in front of you. A massive floating island, seemingly as large as Cappy Island at the beginning of the campaign, not only floats in this heavenly space, it flies through the sky. The island beset by two massive white wings. Uh, nearby, you see what must be 20-something sky whales, each as large as the one you're currently on, flying throughout the area with hundreds of cetarians alongside each of them. The island has what appear to be massive thousand foot tall trees with various Cetarian homes dangling from the branches. There are strange and beautiful blue and orange birds that fly around these trees. And as you fly around the sides of the island, you see just how vast the space is. 
with a jungle and a forest deeper deeper within, forming the Bishte re region. Uh, there's a residential area and an area of meeting houses and temples. You're sort of positioned above the southernmost tip of the island, where the All Mother joins others, and there begins a cacophony of sounds, a beautiful uh, symphony of different whale song, as they greet each other for the first time in their cycles around the line in this year. Um, there's an, an exquisite beauty and an overwhelming sense of love and belonging in this space. Um, this is the oldest, most foundational land in the entire world, and certainly of the Grand Line. Um, you've arrived at the Sky Island at the home of the Satarian people. Um, it is a just a, an absolutely uh, amazing sight. You've never seen this many sky whales in one location, never this many Satarians uh, in one location. Um, the island, again, is absolutely massive. Um, it is difficult to see just how it is aloft. Um, the wings certainly are moving very, very slowly, but from your perspective, um, the actual island itself is moving very, very slowly. The sky whales are able to move around it with pretty considerable um, speed. Um, the island has its own uh, climate. You see bits of clouds uh, over parts of the jungle and forest region. Um, and the wings, by the way, look, uh, the wings of the island look the same kind of brilliant white color that you see from most of the Cetarians. Um, the wings, um, like the underside of the All Mother Sky Whales, bear uh, various symbols and drawings, where on the All Mothers it tends to be Cetarian names, kind of a informal uh, graveyard of sorts, those who've lived aboard the Sky Whale. Um, here, there are other uh, symbols and, and not so much text, um, but iconography that seem to point towards like a more archaic version of the Cetarian language. Um, this, I think all eight of you um, get the sense that when I say what old magic is, this this feels like the summation of that. This feels like a very druidic space, something that has been here um, far before anything of the modern age. The uh, elder of the clan, <clears throat> the one who bound the eight of you in your different pairings, um, gestures to various members of the uh, teenagers who are about to begin their year here, um, and one is, a, is assigned to each pair of you with the task of essentially flying you off the sky well and over to the island. There's probably maybe a mile or two of air gap between where you currently are and the island. Um, you can see it because the space is very clear. There's nothing obstructing you. It's like a, again, like a giant bubble of sorts um, of clear air where you just see cloud around you and the sun above. Um, if you can fly yourself, that's probably fine, but they will guide you to a particular area of the island. So before I move to each particular pairing and where you uh, end up initially, um, any initial reactions just from like seeing this site for the first time? Marini, you've seen this, you know, several times before. I think for you, you are feeling a sense of um, of uh, gratitude, uh, excitement. This is a beautiful place, and it's been at least a few years since you've actually been on a sky whale. Um, he like wipes a tear away. Yeah, that's how. Um, I, I guess I'm just taking all the sights in, and as I'm watching the floating island, I, I wonder what's called keeping it afloat. Uh, can I Wait, sense any um, anything mysterious or magical coming from the island? Because I'm making an arcana check about how it's floating. Well, actually, I, I, yeah, make an arcana check. I'll say number one: you 100% get the sense, and you can feel the palpable energy that just flows from the space. Very not too dissimilar from the sensations you felt when you were sitting on the eyelid of the uh, All Mother. Um, what'd yeah, you get? 13. The 13. The 13. This is far beyond anything that you've ever seen or experienced in your present life, Razim. 
Um, I do think there is a, a tinge of maybe not necessarily memory of you having been to this location, but there's something about it that, you know, whether it's deja vu or something, you know, it's it's not as fresh and new. There is a, a an element of nostalgia with you. you you've, you know, the All Mother has opened up your, your memories a little bit. You've been able to see the most important things from your past. But that's not to say that it is entirely now crystal clear in your mind, right? You can't recount everything as if it were yesterday. There's still a a muddiness of the image. Uh, I think the best way to kind of put it is you've now opened the the photo book of or, or the gallery of your of your memories, but they're all, you know, missing bits and pieces. They're kind of splotches here or there. It's it's as if the the you know uh the photo gallery has uh, been, you know, gotten water damage, I guess, you know, it, it, it's not entirely fully, fully there. Um, mm. but yeah, there's something, again, you, you have been feeling over the last 24 hours, these very unusual uh, sensations because, you, you know, present regime has no idea. You've, you've never seen this before. Mazare, maybe. Mm. <clears throat> uh, and I guess I say, what do you guys think keeps that island afloat? Uh, mechanical device, uh, magical gem hidden on the island. They and took us it's... to one of their most secret places in the world, regime, and you're worried about how it's floating? Yeah, it's. Come on, look. Think about it. What kind of magics would be needed in order to do that? He's the smart magic guy. He's supposed to think about this stuff. I mean... Yeah. I can't help but be curious. Hey. It, it feels very old. It isn't it f like raw magic? Hey, like almost as old as you. Yeah. Yeah, almost as old as you, Myrtle. Well, I mean, you're older than me, Razim. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I'll be right. <laughs> Hope you're ready uh, to explore a lot, Myrtle, because that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to see if we can understand some of this magic. Yeah, would I know if this is some sort of, like, power source? It would, uh... In terms of how the island is floating? Yeah, and... like, spiritually. Um, You can make a religion or an arcana check if you'd like. I think it's a challenge, but maybe you've heard something. Okay. Terrible. But... Fourteen. Fourteen. There's nothing it, you have heard from your imperial exploits about there being a Cetarian island in the sky. I think what you know, with the, you, you have the same limited knowledge that the Imperium does, which is that they have no idea how to get here. Now that you've seen it. See how big it is. See how slow it moves. See that the island has wings. That raises a question in your mind. Um, as far as how it's floating uh, and being as able to be kept aloft, um, all I can say is that you get the sense of just an incredible amount of arcane power coming from every inch of this place. If you were to do a detect magic spell Every every centimeter is going to be lighting up to some degree. I didn't believe this place existed. Hey, it's uh, it's something else. To think that all the majesty, all the mystery of the line, and that right above in the sky, there's there's a whole other world. I have a feeling we're going to see more things that we wouldn't believe. Hey, this is... Folk would kill for this. Folk have killed for this. This is a great honor. I'm cautiously optimistic. You're welcome. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Myrtle and Razim. Yeah. Um, you are probably a mix. Well, Razim can 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 float. 
Um, but Res- Myrtle, you probably are carried maybe by several um, <laughs> uh, Cetarians. Um, I can float, but not like fly. I think someone helps you. You know, again, the the members of the uh, the teenagers who are going to be spending their year there have been asked to help all of you off the Sky Whale. They there is no um, infrastructure designed for like docking or anything. This is a society people can fly. Um, okay. Um, Myrtle Razine, you are brought to um, the more residential part of the island. There's three parts: the residential, the the, the, the living area. There's kind of the more formal uh, meeting area, temples and such are there. And then you have the the largest, probably about half of the entire island is just for the Bishteen uh, rituals. You are um, specifically brought um, to <clears throat> a area high up at the tops of one of these thousand foot tall uh, trees. Um probably on one of these uh, fairly thick branches. It would be, you know, several feet uh, in width um, and several more feet in um, in thickness. It begins to kind of rain a little bit where you are on the island. Small droplets hitting both of you. Even as, as high as you are, there is, again, a small kind of ecosystem weather system um, on the home island. Um, you see plants of various colors. Um, of course, the beautiful green of the trees, of the leaves, and of the uh, vegetation beneath you, but also blue and red and orange and violet, beautiful plants that you've never uh, set your eyes on before. Um, you are so high up and you've been situated in um, a branch of a tree. Um, I think you probably are a little in a precarious situation uh, height-wise. Um but you are not alone up here. Um, there are a bunch of other Cetarians um, kind of on the branch near the further end where it gets much more thin and your weight probably would not be supported. Um, they are playing uh, a game of chicken. Um, they are jumping off the branch and they are seeing how far they can get before they you know, spread their wings and, you Jesus know, pitch back that up. that sounds terrifying. Love Cetarian. Uh, <laughs> uh, these are, th- these are kids, probably, uh, it's probably a mix of uh, some who are pre bishteen age, so, you know, 10, 11, 12, maybe, and then probably some older teens who are almost certainly the ones who have uh, decided to do this, you know, 14, 15, 16. Um, um, and I think once you have a landed here, um, one of the older uh, Cetarians, uh, a, a young boy, probably uh, short uh, brown hair, um, same kind of eye color, orange, amber as Marini, smaller wings, uh, shorter in stature, compared probably to both of you. He... Um, comes over and initially uh, is gesturing, uh, then starts talking, and you still have the the stone, a little necklace with a stone around your necks, all eight of you, well, I guess all seven, because Marini speaks Cetarian, uh, which, you know, as we talked about previously, kind of translates the Cetarian for you. But you don't see it in common. You still see their initial Cetarian. Um, it's kind of It kind of looks like, from your perspective, like a bad, a bad lip sync dub. Um, and the the young boy um, says to Myrtle, um, "Would you like to join us? We don't get to uh, play against outsiders often." You, you, you mean jumping off the tree? Yeah. How 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 far up are we? You're like you know, five hundred, six hundred feet up. Uh. Hmm. Rosine's <laughs> looking at you excitingly for for what your answer is going to be. You, you can survive that. Ex- they cap fall damage at a hundred feet. <laughs> he, he's he's very excited. Oh. You, he's never seen someone that looks like you before. I, I mean, you have the 
Oh, that sounds like a bad idea, but I'm very What's wrong, high. Myrtle? Um... Hi. Yeah, we are. Like, like, wow. Yeah, exactly. I think this is like 500 exactly feet. I don't know. I mean. 20... How much um, is this? I don't Z have it. wings, Sonny. I, I don't know what you expect of me. If, oh. But I don't Little Z tugs on, uh, on Razim's uh, shirt and he says, um, My tummy feels weird. <laughs> uh, you have a tummy? <laughs> hey, Myrtle, it looks like the mushroom you gave him is not working out so well. My tummy feels uh, weird. Uh, <laughs> I think Little Z just just hears me say, "Oh, I think it's starting to work." <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, What's no. happening? <laughs> What's starting to work? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> uh, can I can I say because I didn't think about this beforehand? Can I retroactively because I can choose the spells like every morning can i retroactively say that i picked featherfall because we are going really sure okay okay then I'm going, going to, to die <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to die um then yeah i'm going to uh <laughs> i'm gonna look at little c and say i'll raise you to the bottom little c little c is it already is is in position and hey, the, uh, the young Cetarian is looking excited, and he's going to join you in this uh, in this game. Wait, oh. wait, wait. All right. Hey, you don't have three. magic. Three, two. <laughs> little Z. I, I cast, I, I cast, uh, I cast something on Little Z. I cast uh, Levitate on Little Z. <laughs> and then you chuck him over that. <laughs> so does, does Levitate make him just, like, not fall? Like, is he just he floating just there? there? Yeah, uh, um, see... Um, let's see what he can do. Um, he can only move by pushing and pulling against a fixed object or surface. So if he wants to come down, he has to use the tree to like um as leverage. Push, yeah. Um, so so, so, so on on three, uh, Myrtle. Let, let, let um, me let me clarify, Hawthorne. Featherfall can be multi-target. <laughs> <laughs> He's deciding not to. And you decided not to Featherfall, little Z. No, I, I cast it. I cast it last second. No, no don't be bullied. Don't no, no, chat, no. Please. I already used Levitate, you bum. <laughs> it's a little late for that. <laughs> You and the Cetarian jump off this 500 foot branch. I'm above. gonna race him. <laughs> uh, you know what? Gonna, oh, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play Skyfall Chicken with with these with these little little kids. I'm gonna um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab Little Z uh, and float him towards the tree. Tumbles. Little Z. It, why am I not falling? Because I won't let you now. Use the tree to oh, get I, down this the safe way. Are this we not slow. already tied I'm together? Gonna... Oh my god. Wait, 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 oh, wait. Right. I oh, shit. Okay. What? What? Shit. <laughs> you guys are tied together. Was me and you as, two, as one jumps from the tree. <laughs> What? Let's say it again. <laughs> as Myrtle jumps from the tree, there's like a, a fucking like a. Oh no! Fifteen <laughs> moment as you're like pulled, yanked off the branch, oh and you're you're flung down. Um, am, I, am I falling off the so, tree now? You're falling with Myrtle. <laughs> ah! <laughs> little Z is wait. You've already passed Little Z because he can't move that quickly. So you are you are falling above Myrtle. Uh, you're the ne <laughs> the rope still attached. Um, Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> so you either are there's two funny things that can happen from this. Either either I'm featherfalled and they're the dead weight that's carrying me even further, and or funnier. <laughs> <laughs> this funnier, is the first time you hear little <laughs> or funnier uh them being attached to the tree and i jump and just it's like a rope being taut and i just fall back <laughs> and it, the, the line tots and i i'm fucking <laughs> strangled <laughs> <laughs> no no, no. I, I think what makes the most sense is because it, it's attached to his wrist so the weight of you falling from the tree is going to tug regime Razim was not anchored to anything, right? So he's going to go completely upside down as, as you fall from the tree. Um, yeah, as, as you are racing. 
Go ahead. As we were falling, uh, this is probably the first time you hear Razim piss. <laughs> He's screaming at me. like, Feather fall, you asshole! <laughs> I will, I will. I'm going to wait um, until we're like... 400 uh, feet, 300 feet, 200 feet. The uh, Cetarian boy looks at you. <laughs> boom. <laughs> no, not that kind of boom. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? Razim is so shocked and is like not even like he's like Myrtle, something fucking wrong with this guy. So like around one at around one hundred feet, I cast lip. Um, I had I had used le levitate on little Z. So now I'm gonna use Misty step on myself to get safely get back down. Does levitate concentration. Levitate is concentration. That's why I can't use it without dropping little Z. Yeah. Let, let, let go of it. So, uh -huh. so you cast what again? Sorry. I, I use Misty step on Misty step on myself to safely get back to the to the uh, to the ground. You get to the ground immediately. Um, and Myrtle, what are you doing? You're for me. I'm attached to you. Oh, that's yeah, we'll right. fix that later. So you are, you like, I think, hit the grass. You know, it's a little uncomfortable. But uh, the boy who stops it at 50 feet then pussies. swoops swoops, swoops back up, uh, beautiful white wings. And then he lands next to you. And he, uh, you know, you know, gives you a gentle, playful shove. And he says, I win. Yeah, but they won. And we, that was unfair. <laughs> Fucking yeah, cheater. Myrtle. Using spells. Also, I was here. I also look at the guy and say, oh, but also, I was here first. Yeah, yeah. How's Lil Z holding up? <laughs> Lil Z yeah. is very slowly falling from the. Uh, <laughs> he's like kind of trapped in amber area. It's, it's very, very slow. Uh, he just he's 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 like uh he's twirling around very slowly. He's got into like a spin, and the spin is getting more and more. It's getting much faster <laughs> as he's toppling downward, gaining some momentum. Um, and you can hear like a very high pitched, you know, four hundred feet away. You know, just a, just a, a scream. Um, <laughs> it takes like a minute or two of just constant little Z screaming. Um, before he hits the ground very or, softly. He's a puppet. He so doesn't have that much uh, yeah. mass, so he kind of he bounces you know, once or twice, gets some dirt on him. Uh, he stops Back screaming up. only after the bouncing has stopped. Um, he's on his puppet back, and then he says, That was fun. Let's do it again. No, and I cast press digitation to clean him off. Come on, Vazim, this, this is, you live a little. I lived a lot. Oh, yeah, you, you are pretty old. I'm kind of curious about the unboxing. Anyway, <laughs> what are we going to do? So, Hey, what James, what did you cast? What did you cast, James? What did you cast? Oh, oh no. What did you cast? <laughs> Oh, oh press to digitation. No. Uh -oh. Like, yeah, no, you cast a lot Before of misty that. step. I cast for levitated misty step. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you <laughs> you didn't say anything. So much he doesn't have to do it every time. He doesn't do it every time. Shut up. Hey teacher. What's going on? Sorry. Teacher. Nothing. No, 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 no. All magic. Like homework. Teacher. Homework. Teacher. Wild teacher. The box man cast spells. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 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 probably too tired. What's going? What's the problem? Uh, nothing. We were just talking um, about the next. Actually, mix. Misty Step can only <laughs> be used in thirty feet, which means that seventy foot drop still is one hundred <laughs> feet. Um, he needs to roll. Wow, the magic, magic box man cast no, magic. I don't have to. I don't have to do it. Well, that's right. That's right. You cast magic. Make roll a um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roll your wild you magic uh, surge. <laughs> Okay, you fireball so. yourself. Let's go. <laughs> so fireball man, I, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Here's the thing. Because of the location where you currently are, you need to roll a twice per every spell. Ooh. Twice. Oh. oh Jesus fucking Christ. God we're in raw what magic. Is, I mean, I know, I know, I know that we're, I know that considering the context of what we're doing right now, this feels just weird to say, but stop making shit up, Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> what if you blow up their tree? What if you shut the fuck up? <laughs> roll the beautiful bean footage. <laughs> All right, so two rolls for, two twenties, right? And, okay. Don't. Oh, oh God, oh, really? Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, oh my God! Excellent. Excellent. Go. 
Yes. All right, hold on. Oh hold my on. god. Hold on. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Um, I was joking. I was joking too. Um, I wasn't. Before you do, I need to pull up the table of the wild magic. There are so many things here that can go wrong. Uh, but also, a lot of them are pretty good too. So, can go right. Yeah, um, right. Yes, yeah, this roll, is probably how that island roll blew up a D. in the past. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know how the island blew, blew up in the past. Yeah. Um, um, roll a D100. Okay, um, D100. And Myrtle is tied to him. At this oh, point. God. Oh, shit. No, no. All right. Well, only I get... two feet away from him. I got a oh, 50. Boy. What is 50? A 50. No, oh, well, that's not bad, but it's still kind of hilarious. <laughs> I can't speak for the next minute. <laughs> I can't speak for the next minute. Whenever I try, pink bubbles flow out of my mouth. Welcome to Monty's world. This is excellent. Um, oh, God. So, um, James Brown Jr. VA, what, is this, what does this sound like? <laughs> Excellent. I, get, I, I see so what's happening, and I go, <laughs> I see what's happening, and I, uh, my, my eyebrows furrow, and I look like I want to say, oh, no, not again, but what it sounds like is, <laughs> <laughs> um, So I don't have to do it again, right, since I don't have to do it for the second spell either, I just, just this one time. <laughs> no, of course twice, you gotta right? do it for the two spells. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm manifesting another natural one for you, buddy. Me too. Me too. Oh, this is fun. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. One more time. It, well, it's two times each each spell. So one more time. Okay. Okay. Oh, God, so cool. Good. Mm. <laughs> Guys, I can fucking blow up the island. You gotta be careful. Quit asking yeah, yeah, be funny. <laughs> That's what the funny. narrative would want. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, agents of chaos. I just knew it. Is right. there is there one that's like I guess the worst one's like fireball on a location centered on yeah. yourself. Yeah, that um, would suck. A little bit. Or your age if you age. Yeah, oh, but yeah. he's well, a box he's, man, so he's like, ready, you're not a box what, man. What, a box man. Out of the box. That was your box. That, that, why do you call me box man? Because you came you, from the box. We saw the, we were in the box. box. I just, I just imagine some polygonal, like. Minecraft S figure Minecraft. walking around like <laughs> Hello, I'm the box man. <laughs> like, what happens? Um I speak bubbles for the next minute, that's all. Bubble boy. That's it. Myrtle, what's your reaction to uh to this? This means you can't say anything if I tell a bad joke. So, uh, so, um, I, I'm surprised that you're not a fighter. I mean, like, I would have thought that you had been very good at boxing. Rib shot. <laughs> Got him. Did I punch him in the shoulder? All right, all right. Well, that's it. Uh, and where are we even going? Um, you see, um, falling from the, the one of the branches... Um, further up from where you were, um, a very familiar figure, um, very colorful, doing somersaults in the air, accompanied by um, a oh, uh, again. <laughs> a <laughs> cute, cute little animal who's also doing somersaults in the air, um, uh, who is racing another Cetarian. Um, it's Salome, um, coming down from one of the trees. Oh, shit. What? I forgot about and, this guy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, and that's where I'll stop for that group, and I'll, we'll, we'll pick up, we'll pick back up there in a second. Um, next, let's go to Marini and Salami. McCleary. Oh, <clears throat> Salami. Here you go, these fucking people. Okay, one second. All right. Um, the two of you, because Marini has, you know, is a Cetarian, um, you're placed in the more uh, inner depths of the island, um, closer to where the Bishtin ritual takes place. The ground here is uh, has very thick grass up to your knees. There's rough brush. There's You can see the massive tall trees with thick canopies. Um, it has kind of a jungle-like environment here, though it's not, it's more cool than it is humid and warm. Um, the area where the Bishtin takes place is visible, and you could now see what the Elder meant when she said that you would recognize it, even if you're from the outside. There is a border um, along a stretch of the grass here, 
made up of these beautiful blue-white flowers. They're kind of shaped like a sunflower, except each stem is about a foot uh, in, in width. These are massive flowers. They're thickly packed together. They kind of make a, a flower wall of sorts along the stretch of grass here. Um, you have this moment to yourself in the forest, cool air, walking along the border of a ritual that is integral to Satarian culture and one that Marini has been through in multiple roles, as we talked about previously. What are you two up to? Marini is like survival mode. She's done this before, so she's like, we need to go make shelter near water. Maybe hunt. Right. Yes. Okay. I, lucky for you, I don't know about your friends. I, I can't say what will happen to them. However, I have done this twice. Did not think I'd be doing this again, but here we are. Right. So explain to me what exactly it is we're doing so basically i think mary just like sits down like she's chilling um she's like so basically we just have to stay separated from civilization for about a week um okay. just in observance for the machine um we're just doing make just a small watered down part of it um but basically if you were Satarian, um, then in this situation, it'd be you and if you had a sibling, it'd be you and your sibling tied together for the week with you mentoring them as you've done this before. Um, I see. So, can't say well, what will happen to your friends. However, I've been through this multiple times. Right, so you're saying I'm in good hands. Very good hands. Well... Wonderful. You know, actually, and he, uh, he, like, lifts up his wrist to kind of emphasize the rope. Well, seeing as how we are, well, tied together, I, uh, I wanted to apologize for last night for pulling a knife on you. You see, uh, you caught me off guard is all. Throwing me name out like you did. I, I, I thought you... Must have been a secret ally of someone I'd wrong uh, come to collect. I thought maybe you were going to toss me over the whale or, or something. <laughs> so, I hope there's no hard feelings. I mean, I can pull a knife on you and we can call it even. Well, I su you could do that. I, but, uh, sure. Surprise me one day with a knife and we'll call it even. No, on okay. second thought, don't do that. That's don't a terrible do that. idea. See, I'm I, sorry. Uh, I, I am sorry I caught you off guard there. I... I guess it's my fault for leaving the note in the first place. I mean, it was it was well written. I'll give you that. A beautiful <laughs> penmanship. Oh, thank you. I, uh... Well, I was in school till the seventh grade, so... I oh, learned a I fair bit. It's, um... What... Why seventh grade? I'm sorry, we uh, sort of just do schooling until we're, while well, some of us just keep going. Um, is this a, a pirate thing? Uh, it's very much a McCleary thing. I oh, okay. didn't care about school that much anymore, and my family needed money, and I had to work, and yeah, I, you know. Makes sense. Uh, by the way, as long as we're on the, the subject, uh, you see, last night I, I also, I said some things about the other members of the crew. I asked you who you, you thought was weakest and, well, I think it's best if you pay that no mind. That were the alcohol talking, I think. All right. I don't, you see, the thing is, the old mother she asked me if I'd keep the crew safe and I, and I know in my heart I'll try my best but I suppose that some sort of failure is inevitable and 
Uh, I can be very selfish. Uh, best just ignore what I said. I mean, my, my opinion still stands with what I said, so... Well, I suppose mine does too. I, uh... I... But we'll see where our things end up. Harlow well, could prove me wrong, who knows? You know, he's not a bad man. I guess, he just has a punchable face. <laughs> what? I, he's got a nice face. Mm. You don't think he looks a little smarmy sometimes? Well, he definitely looks a little smarmy sometimes. <laughs> when I first met him, I thought he were a prick. But he was saying he was with the Empire, so I was a bit biased. Ew. I, well, he's, he's, he's got a good heart. <sighs> All right. Well, I can only assume unless he's been lying to me, face. Hmm. I'm not saying you have to like him, I'm just saying. I'll, I'll play nice. Anyway, uh, I would appreciate that, Miranie. Uh, in these flowers here, if we were to step in them, like what? I know we're not supposed to go there, but if we decided to go there, hmm. I wouldn't want to interrupt a ritual like this. It's very important for their coming of age. But if we were to get in a tree and observe. I wouldn't be opposed. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Why don't we uh, take care of what you were talking about first, that shelter and all of that, if we're going to be here for a while, and, and maybe we'll see what we can get up to, huh? Mm-hmm. And Mary starts macheting her way through this forest. <laughs> <laughs> um... You... I probably do this for, you know, an hour or two. You've, you know, as you mentioned, you've... You... You way around this place, even if we haven't been to this particular part of the forest. Um, about a few hours in um, to your uh, camping out uh, survival mode work, um, you come upon a creature um, perched on one of the branches of the many trees here. At a distance, you would probably mistake it for a hawk or some kind of large bird of prey, um, but instead, this very majestic, very beautiful uh, creature is formed with what appear to be streaks of colored cloud stuff woven into the uh, silhouette of a large falcon. Bits of um, mist filter off of it as if it were a living being made of dry ice. Uh, its talons occasionally spark with blue-yellow hints of lightning, and its eyes, uh, though small and from a distance, they kind of remind you of the All-Mother, um, inky black with specks of gold. I need you both to roll initiative. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna ask, I'm like, does it look dangerous? <laughs> and then, we stumbled um, upon the evil. <laughs> right? Plus one to initiative. I, uh, <laughs> I can't select my pog. Should I just roll it? Sure. Cool. Write those numbers down and remember them because we're going to go to the next group. Hey, -o. oh, yolo. we got to fight things. Yolo. Uh, Freya to Kai. Um, you two are initially dropped on one of the lower branches on a different part of the residential area of the island. So you're probably, in a sense, close-ish to where Myrtle and Razim are, but not, you know, we're talking a few miles away. Um, okay. You're maybe only like 20 feet off the ground, um, and you're allowed to initially be set in um, on the balcony of a large uh, home here. Uh, made of wood from the trees. Uh, the environment, especially the 
grassy forest area beneath you, Takai, reminds you a great deal of the one back on your original home island yourself, the glade where you made the deal with Virtus. Um, Freya, while this is, you know, kind of a first for you in this particular location, it does remind you a lot about the environment of Cappy Island, um, mm. save for the giant animals. Mm. Um, the elder Cetarians um, that are here in this fairly large home, this is kind of a meeting place within the trees. Um, men, women, um, they meet together around a, a small fire, and they... They're pretty world weary. They battle tested. They're they're adults. Um, they um, oversee the Bishdeen's strict standards, um, and they're the only ones who stay here year round. Um, I mentioned earlier that you have to pass the Bishdeen. These are the folks who determine whether a rule has been broken. Um, you can tell that their prolonged presence has affected them in some capacity, and it kind of underlines the extent to which magic just flows through this place. Um, they, their wings are now glowing a very slight but noticeable radiant energy. Um, no other Cetarian's wings does that. And the pupils of their eyes are now gone. Um, it is just lost in beautiful amber gold a coloration nothing other uh, monstrous or anything it, it's still fairly minimal but there are still very clear distinctions that indicate they're they're different um you are kind of on the little balcony area this little uh step of you know a foot or so of space overlooking the 20 feet drop um and the other smaller homes around the other Cetarians are meeting inside. Um, the door is, you know, ajar, but they're not paying attention to you at this t- at this point. Um, you have a moment to yourselves tied together. What do you do? I think this is what we're doing. We're just not talking. <laughs> and we're all we're all together, yeah. <laughs> we're we're by ourselves. <laughs> okay. Just whatever we're supposed to do here. Try not to get in my way, okay? It's kind of hard to do that when you're tied to my wrist. Oh, so you do got a little bite in you, don't you? She's not gonna say anything back to that. What did I do to you? I don't know what you're talking about. I... Yeah, you do. Don't play that with me. I know I'm not the smartest, but I'm not stupid. Oh, yeah. Really? Then why didn't you tell me what I did to you? Why did you make me do that? Why did you make me try to steal that from McCleary? Did you see me? try to make you do it? I'm... Gaslighting her? I know what I remember. I remember a lot of things. And I know what you did. I just want to know why and what I did to make you do it. The Kai turns and stares right into her eyes. You don't fucking deserve to be on the limelight. What makes you think that? Because you're a spoiled, privileged little brat who had no idea what she was getting into. Don't you dare call me that. You don't know what it was like. You don't know what any of that was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, have you ever starved? H- have you ever been so poor that you actually didn't know if you were ever going to eat? I 
Did you have a family that loved you, Takai? Because I didn't. I may have gotten what I fucking wanted. But I didn't get what I needed. I don't know what made you decide to come on this ship. I know why I did it. It's so hard for me to talk about this. Because I know whatever I say, you're not going to understand and you're just going to laugh in my face. Because I left because I needed to. I left because there was nothing for me there. Because if I stayed, I would have been exactly like him. And I didn't want that. <laughs> and you're the one who wants to kill him? After all that talk about how you didn't want to become like him. You didn't want to be a dangerous dragon. And you're the one who's saying, I want to be the one who kill him. Just have to do everything your fucking self, don't you, Because Freya? I don't want to make anybody else hurt. Well, that's what you fucking do, Freya! I didn't mean for that to happen with the corpse collector. I had a plan, and it messed up. I got scared, and I made a mistake. That happens, and no one else was hurt. Everyone turned out okay. That's all that matters, and I have been trying my best to make up for it since the day that it happened. But you keep throwing it back in my face. Like it keeps happening over and over and over again, even though I'm trying. But how hard do I have to try to make it clear to everyone that I'm doing my best? And I just don't want anyone else to get hurt. I did what I did because I thought maybe I could do it myself. I didn't want to see you or anybody else go down there and... Why? Have whatever. Why? What do you mean, why? Is why? It so important? why is it so important that you're the one who does it, Freya? Because it's what I'm supposed to do. Why is it what you're supposed to do? Because you're all my horde! Why do you think it was so hard for me to get the fucking log pose, Takai? I didn't want it. I never wanted anything in my horde. It's not about treasure. It's not about anything. A dragon is supposed to guard their horde with their life. You know what that makes me feel like, Freya? It doesn't make me feel like your friend. It doesn't make me feel like your crewmate. It makes me feel like your fucking pet. That's not it, I promise. A dragon doesn't get to choose their horde. It's a bit like imprinting. When a dragon first lays eyes upon something that they will collect, for lack of a better word, it doesn't change. I tried for the longest time when I was little to collect other things that might be more fitting. That's why my horde here is so stupid. I don't know what would make a real dragon's horde if it bit me right in the face. I never talk about it, but Monty's death really hit me hard. I didn't even know him that well. And I promised myself that after he died that no one else would. Even if I had to sacrifice myself in the process. And how do you think it would have felt? If I had seen you die 
after everything I tried to do to save you, to feel... Uh, uh, Freya. He, his eyes widen and he slaps his hand on his mouth. I won't ask about your past. Because I, for one, know how, how hard it is to talk about something that hurts you. To talk about something that you relive every time you close your eyes at night. Why not ask? Why not just ask? Why did you do what you did? Who are you trying to protect that you're failing to do with me? There are certain things I have to do or I lose my magic and something bad happens to someone else. Is that why you made me do it? <laughs> I wish I could say it was just because my patron asked me to. But you do piss me the fuck off, Freya. Yeah, that seems to be the general consensus. I get what you mean about your horde, Freya. But don't treat me like a fucking pet. Don't do things to protect me just because you think it's the altruistic thing to do. That's not it at all, I promise. I don't see you as a pet or an object. When you talk about how you want to do all of this to protect me, it doesn't make me feel like you're seeing me as an equal Freya. Look, I'm not gonna lie and pretend like I'm not stronger than a lot of people that I know. My father uses his power against people who are weaker than he is. I don't want to do that. I know I'm not that strong. Nowhere near the level he is. But if I can use it anything that I have to protect the people that I care about, then it's worth it. Like I said, I, I don't see you as a pet or an object. Dakai, you're my friend. And as much as you hate me, that's not going to change anytime soon. I can't help it. I want to protect you because I want to see you be okay. How can you not hate me after what I did? I don't think it's possible for me to. <laughs> well, I think you kind of hate your dad. He was never a part of the Horde in the first place. There are certain things that have to be done for a person or anything in a dragon's sword for it to be ousted from it. You either lose your attraction to it or it disappears. And in his case, he did both. I never talk about my mama because there's not much to talk about. When she passed away when I was little, dad changed a lot. He got cold. And he stopped being the person that I... thought he was.
He's always been cruel. I won't pretend that he wasn't. But he at least used to hide it from me. He's, he's still your dad. No matter how complicated your feelings for our, our form are, you shouldn't have to be the one to put him down. Is it bad that a part of me wants to? I don't like hurting people. I only do it when I have to. I remember... on... in the air... where Sunny was overtaken. There was a ranger there. I don't know what happened to her, but we were very high up and I dropped her from wherever. I know I killed her and I didn't think about it for a second. It terrifies me to know that my father does the same thing, but to so many more people. But if I do it to protect someone else, to save them from any sort of danger that could happen in the future, then I'm doing the right thing, aren't I? Yeah. We're pirates. <laughs> Sometimes this shit happens. I want to be the one to do it because I want to show them that I'm strong enough. Somewhere along the way, he became disappointed in me because I wasn't the perfect daughter that he wanted me to be. The fighter that would follow his every single rule. The dragon that would take over for whenever he decided he was done. I don't want that. Well, you've got eight people who I'm pretty sure would be more than happy to kill him. If you, uh, wanted us to. With my luck, I'm hoping that maybe it won't come to it. But overall, I really do want to see him pay. Takai, I don't want you to be angry with me. I want you to be my friend again. Give me some time. Okay? I will. We're gonna have to be nice to each other if this is gonna work, though. He... At that point, he reaches into his pocket and takes out a coin. <sighs> if you're ever in the middle of something and it's not working out... Just flip this in the air once, and who knows? Maybe your luck will change. And he gives one of Virtus's coins to her. Thanks. Very nice. What does cool. it do, though? Does it really change your luck? Uh, I don't know. I tried using it when whatever was going on with the regime was going on, and, well, it didn't help. <laughs> well... Maybe it will someday. Thanks. And... I'll try not to risk my life for anything anymore. But... I'm still gonna try really hard to make sure that no one 
just hurt me. Guy I'll nods, just... and then just says, "Well, I guess we should try and figure out what we need to be doing here." And yeah. see. <laughs> cool. That was nice. There was take a deep breath, both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Take a, oh, take a deep breath. Take a cold towel and a cigarette. Um, let me. Take <laughs> <laughs> both... a big trip. Both of you, do, do either of you have a point of inspiration currently? No, do I don't think so. Then take one. Okay. Hey. I think you get that when you uh, <laughs> Draw my have such. Yeah, man, it's it's great. Good job. Are both of you okay? Yeah. I'm. F- yeah, that was okay. Ruben, Exhilarating. Ruben, you once killed my boyfriend. Like <laughs> I did. I did. Nothing, I, nothing that can happen in this. Nothing that can happen in this group will be any more traumatizing <laughs> than that. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, man. Well, don't, I mean, don't, don't make that. it a challenge. Yeah. Don't make it a challenge. <laughs> oh, man. Where's your brother live, Takai? Okay. Not for long. But yeah, uh, everyone, uh, <laughs> y'all are free as horde. Surprise. Um, and Takai Let's is see. our whore. He's our whore. The fourth and final um, oh. uh, pairing. <laughs> now for something completely different. Uh, <laughs> and now we're gonna flip that coin. Uh, <laughs> where where Sunny and Harlow are, you are the only pairing that has been set in the sort of uh, meeting temple area of the island. Um, you are initially placed in front of a very beautiful temple made of white marble. Um, there are symbols of trees and the sky whales engraved on the stonework. It's kind of like a, a a triangular shape of building. Um, it has text of Cetarian script as well. It, it matches closer the um, the older version of Cetarian that you saw on the underside of the wings of the island. Um, and the temple itself sits at the very end of a long strip of greenery um, with various meeting places on either side, small buildings. Um, you can kind of think of it like a more formal and a larger version of like a university quad. It's kind of what I'm imagining in my head. Um, in the middle of the space, equidistant to everything else, there is a circle um, cut into the ground with where the land there is dug a foot or two deeper than the rest of the space here. Um, you have this moment together. Um, what, it, what is the initial um, Sunny Harlow energy? I'm just, I'm looking at people walking by and stuff. I feel like it's a mutual ignoring. Yeah. <laughs> My God damn it. Do I, do I see anything interesting? The hole. There's a hole in the floor. Well, I mean, besides a hole. <laughs> There's a temple. Make a perception check. There's a hole in the bottom of the floor. <laughs> There's a hole in the bucket. <laughs> Twelve. What's wow. these mid rolls today? <laughs> Your eyes are broken, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have the the temple behind you. There are a meeting area across from where you are. Um, there's no, there's maybe only a few, maybe younger Cetarians who are walking, but I would say the vast majority of, of, of folks here um, are are flying around. Um, most of the buildings have doors or, or openings rather at the top of the building um it the the temple that you're currently at does have a more human level um entrance but you can tell that the fact that this is a culture of um flying creatures informs even their architecture right you're not going to have a rectangular door in every building if you can just the roof yeah well, exactly exactly so you, you see uh, indications that that's been thought of in terms of their approach here um you do um see someone um approach you very maybe only a few minutes into your initial time here you're getting used to the space that you're in it's uh, you've this, you, you've had a lot of grandiose sites this is the first kind of grounded these are meeting areas temples um you see a figure um walk towards you um, and at first, he's a little bit further away, so it's difficult to get a sense of, of what's going on. Mm-hmm. But of course, 
There's only one person who is helmeted that you know, who is covered in black armor with bits mm. of blue magic that run around the crevices of it. Oh, um, I fucking he, had it here. <laughs> <laughs> he oh. he sees you. He says you. Um, and he as he steps forward. Um, don't make eye contact with him. I, eye contact with him. I look at the ground. He's got a helmet on. He's got no eyes. I ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> and you've you've heard his broken common before when um he's tried to speak in common he only speaks Sutarian. um but you now have as i mentioned earlier you still have those little necklaces with the small stone that translates so this is the first time you've heard um jet uh your rival uh before at least in, in common in a clear dialect um and he says you dare step here in our home, having defiled my brothers, having betrayed your friends? And you then hear um, as the black wings that you saw. The first time you saw them was right after um, your first captain was abducted and he and Pitch um, helped scare Achilles off. Um, it gives us, I think, probably only the second time you've seen these wings, black wings. Um, that have been are burst out from like little slots in the back of his armor. Um, the feather color is a much more distinct charcoal compared to that of Marini. There are bits of it that are kind of burnt. Um, and even though you're wearing something that would translate, um, he somehow just the perhaps just through the anger of what he's saying, um, something is cannot fully work through the, the stone. Um, and he says, here's my Cetarian. Um, Stutas di Kaiwa Kenabishto, Rensho Saridanish. Um, and as he says that, other Cetarians that are in the area around you, um, either just kind of passing by or flying in the area, freeze in place, um, turning towards you and, 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 uh, to Jet, um, in kind of this, like, sense of shock of what he said. You know the first part. You don't know the second part. And you don't have to guess because um, Jet says, um, in case you don't get it, you've been challenged. Do you accept? Or are you just a fledgling in a fancy suit? Is Jet saying this? Mm-hmm. I called you a child. <laughs> I walk up to him with Sunny next to me. <laughs> oh no, fuck no! Yeah, yeah, I gotta come with me. Um, <laughs> physically a child leash. And I look at him and I say, Look, buddy. We've changed since the last time I saw you. I'm not gonna take your shit anymore. And I say, in Cetarian, Go jump off a whale. We are going to pick it up there next week. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> we are going to see next week um, the first uh, duel, one v one, of uh, characters. Um, How much rope excited. did you say there is? <laughs> <laughs> between Harlow, um, John Harlow, and his rival, um, Jet, um, who we still haven't seen the face of yet. Oh my um, gosh. So to kind of just recap where we are left off, we have uh, Myrtle and Razim, who have just run into Salome, uh, Marini and McCleary, who are going to be in combat with some kind of creature, um, Freya and Takai, who have, you know, are now need to now I need a break, uh, basically. <laughs> and uh, some uh, some stuff that's going to happen to Harlow. We'll see. Um, all right. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. Uh, we all super, super appreciate it. Um, there is some, we'll have some fan art that was from this session next time. Um, but yeah, thank you all for, for hanging in there with us. Uh, the next session will be, I, I think it's still on next week. Uh, normal time, 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. Um, if you don't already subscribe to Jonah's Twitch channel, get on the Discord, do all the fun stuff, help tip the 
uh, the comic. It looks cool. It's look, it's great. It's cool shit. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks again. And uh, let's say goodnight, everyone. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, everybody. Love you guys.